Hello, this is another video in my continuing series about Perl and noise, and I just want to briefly show you what the noise detail function does. And if you can remember a time, <laughs> a little while ago when I recorded my first video uh, today, or I don't know when you're, uh, what, never mind about time. Time doesn't exist in the world of YouTube. But um, I do have a previous video, which you might have watched, where I talk about how the noise algorithm actually works. And if you recall, there was this idea, oh, look, it's a purple pen. That's so exciting. I didn't even know what color this was. Um, there was this idea of picking random values spaced apart with some amplitude and then interpolating between them. And then, again, picking random values spaced closer together with a smaller amplitude. And then, again, picking random values closer together with an even smaller amplitude. And then interpolating between those. And then adding all of these random waves together results in some nice Perlin noise. This is how the Perlin noise algorithm works. Now, over here, we have a visualization of Perlin noise in two dimensions, which I just talked about in my previous video. Smooth randomness, each pixel having a similar grayscale value to the pixels around it. Now, what we can actually, so this is the default visualization of two dimensional Perlin noise, but we can look at how that changes based on, um, based on this noise detail function. So, what the noise detail function does is it actually takes two arguments. Let's say I say noise detail four. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. You can see nothing changed. Can you see? But if I say noise detail eight, you can see that it changed. Look, it's got finer detail. Noise detail 24. Can you see that even finer detail? So what that first argument is doing is controlling the number of octaves. So the more octaves that you have, the the further kind of down this trajectory you're going and the smaller, more fine detail you're getting. Now, over here, I kind of want to, uh, <laughs> okay, now, let's, so let's go back to noise detail four. That's the default. There's also a second, and by the way, if I were to say noise detail one, like what if I just do one octave, you can see now we've kind of lost that finer detail to just have this sort of smooth grayscale values. Now, what if we look at the second argument. The second argument is often referred to as fall off. Remember I was saying how the period of these waves is shrinking, the amplitude is shrinking? Well, by what factor? It's shrinking by a factor of 0.5, have. Has. So if I were to say noise detail 4 comma 0.5, hold on, I don't like the size of my things here. Um, you can see that's the sort of default noise. But I can now say noise detail 4 0.9, and look what that looks like. A little bit weird. Or 0.2, and look what that looks like. Or I could say 0.4, but with you know 12 octaves. You can control the quality of the Perlin noise. I actually am curious, just for a second, to look at. Whoops. What it looks like with this one-dimensional Perlin noise example. Let's just change the noise. Detail to one. Urgh. Let's try noise detail one. You can see how this graph really changes. You sort of lost the sort of finer detail. It looks you only have that kind of like original random noise. Now, if I say noise detail eight, you can see how there is even more detail in uh, the sort of finer uh, points of change. And I could also say now noise detail uh, 8 and then change the fall off to 0.2. And you can see what that looks like versus 0.8. And you can see what that looks like. So there's a lot of <coughs> how, you, how you alter the, the noise detail function can change the behavior of the noise. And that's something you can control to get a variety of different effects, whether it's a pixel effects or otherwise.